For my next volume of uh, the Funk Vinyl uh, Profiles, I'm going to be doing something just a little bit different today. I haven't really accumulated that much new uh, vinyl and the Funk Jazz Soul Spectrum since I did in my last video. So I did a little private crate digging, as it were, you know, down in our cellar where there's tons of vinyl. And I've been just listening to my new Ion USB turntable, which is currently connected to my two uh, portable Sony speakers, and it makes some really joyful noise, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that right now. And I've just been immersing myself in music since the first of the year. It's been a great way to get through winter. And some of these albums are things that I've dug out I haven't listened to in years, and I get a whole new opinion on. And I've ordered them in terms of year and everything, so they make some sense. And the first four or five vinyls you're going to see are actually uh, part of the new collection. I was at uh, Dr. Records uh, about a week, week and a half ago, and I found this album, James Brown Live at the Garden, a live performance at the Garden from 1967. I have heard about this album. It's got that fake stereo that I have heard so much about from uh, vinyl collectors and so on and so forth. And a couple of the songs sound like studio versions of the songs with overdubbed audience noise, which was a common issue with some James Brown live albums. But you can tell some of them are live. And because of the fake stereo, the sound quality on this album is really terrible. But the music is so funky you can't take it. I mean, this is just fabulous James Brown. From his Don't Be a Dropout period. You can see in the back, James Brown with Hubert Humphrey uh, dealing with the Don't Be a Dropout campaign. He's got the singles there. This represents the conversion of James Brown into being a very strongly uh, active political figure in the late 60s, following the release of Cold Sweat. Let Yourself Go is the song. On this album, even though I think it's been overdubbed, or on any album, Let Yourself Go. I don't even go there. That's me go. Gula Matari. This is Quincy Jones' album from 1970. It's uh, got some ring wear on it, but this album plays wonderfully. His follow-up to his Walking in Space record. It's got Freddie Hubbard and Herbie Hancock and Eric Gale and Bob James, Bobby Scott, Ron Carter. And it's just a great orchestral jazz funk album. Humming is an amazing song. You just got to hear that song humming. It's just fantastic. This is actually something I got the day I got my uh, Rainbow New Year's calendar. I got it at uh, Books A Million. It is a Motown reprint of the Temptations 1981 album produced by Tom Bell. Um, the lineup including uh, Richard Street, Dennis Edwards, Glenn Leonard, uh, falsetto vocalist, Melvin Franklin, and Otis Williams. They had just returned to Motown with their Power album, and we'll get into that one in another video. It's actually a cutout. Aiming Your Heart is a song that I've heard, and I really look forward to hearing this album. I'm sure it's absolutely amazing. The Commodores, Night Shift. Lionel Richie had left the band a couple years before this, and was replaced by uh, Heatwave, um, lead singer, who himself had replaced Johnny Wilder, who had been in an incapacitating car accident, um, and uh, who was a great... Um, UK vocalist. Night Shift was a great tribute song, and this is a great album with songs like Play This Record Twice and Lighting Up the Night. It, it's a very good combination of kind of uh, bringing in the Prince Minneapolis sound to their uh, Motown uh, repertoire. Great album, great comeback hit album for them from 1985. Really good shape, too. And here's another Commodores. This is uh, from the next albums you're going to see, including this one, are all from my crate digging exercises. Uh, this is Heroes from 1980. I love the gatefold of this. Look at that gatefold. They're black and they're proud. Lionel on the end. Tom McCleary. Walter Orange. Ron Lapreed. William King. Beautiful. Beautiful internal cover. I love the title track on this. There's a lot of civil rights and sanctified church overtones on this album. Very bold cover. Champions of the Motown Funk. 
20th Anniversary, produced by James Anthony Carmichael. Great album. Daz Band, Invitation to Love, same year. This is the Daz Band's first album on Motown and the first album under the name Daz Band. They used to be called Kinsman Daz. Great early pre-synthesizer funk album, a lot of horns. Great record. Sly and the Family Stone, Ain't But the One Way. This uh, really qualifies as the last Sly and the Family Stone studio album. It was made in 1980, but released in 1982. It's a good album. Eh, not much innovation on it. Uh, sounds kind of like a early 80s Funkadelic album. I'm not really surprised. This is in bad shape, but I might either get this on vinyl or on uh, CD if I can find it. But I'm glad I have it. It's a good album. It's not bad. SOS Band 3. I love the cover to this. The SOS brand. Maybe a little statement there. This is where the SOS band started to get really into the modern slicker boogie funk sound with high hopes. This was Jammin' Lewis's first outside production from the time. There's the back cover to that album. Also on cassette. Great record. Sylvester, All I Need. Do You Want a Funk was the song. I, I love that album art from the late Sylvester. Great electro disco album. Cameo style. Somebody wrote DC on it. I don't know if that's um, Chocolate City or if that's just their initials. This album came out in 1983, and this is when they pared down to a four member lineup, basically. It's a transitional album of sorts. Very good cameo record from 83. Now, you know, this album by George Benson, 2020, from 1984, I, I didn't really care for this musically all that much. I maybe listened to it and get another impression, uh, now that I'm a little bit uh, older and heard more music. I, I felt it was a little bit bland for a George Benson album. Um, there wasn't a lot of playing and singing on this. He was just basically singing songs that somebody else seemed to do. But uh, somebody wrote, I want to be Michael Jackson on the cover, you know, in response to his nose, nose job. I found that kind of snide, actually. Not really fond of that attitude, but, you know, I mean, it probably does actually add some intrinsic value to that album. I don't know who wrote that. I like the cherry standing up on, though. It is a great version of Bobby Darin's Beyond the Sea, though, that I like. More jazzy. The Crusaders, Ghetto Blaster. Great cover by the late Ernie Barnes. Might recognize him for uh, being the guy behind... Um, J.J. Evans' paintings on good times. Uh, I just love the imagery here. This is a great album from the Crusaders from 84. I didn't know they recorded an album this late in the game. We have uh, the late Joe Sample, Wilton Felder, and Leon Ndugu Chancellor, who came in to replace uh, Stix Hooper, who was doing a solo career at the time. My favorite song on here would be, songs that is, would be the first two, Dead End, and Gatalotta Chocolata. Those are just fantastic jams. My uh, friend and blogging partner on Andre's Music Talk, Henry Hopkins. Shout out to you, Henry. Hope you're doing good today. Um, informed me many times that this album really informed his musical understanding as a child, and that's very important. So I'm, I'm glad. And I dedicate uh, this video and uh, talking about this album to Henry. I love it. Apollonia 6. This is a rarity. This is one of those print side projects that will probably not be reissued, at least in his lifetime. Um, an observation I made about this album, the songs I like best on it, and probably the funkiest songs, are Blue Limousine and Some Kind of Lover, which don't feature Apollonia or Prince's ex-girlfriend Suzanne Moonsey, but uh, Brenda Bennett, who has the stronger voice of all members of Apollonia 6. Brenda's featured prominently on the back. There's all kinds of goodies in this album. A lyric guide. Centerfold. There's Apollonia. Susan. Don't want that record to get damaged. Next up is The Family. This is a true rarity, and I am so happy I found this on vinyl. This has some of Prince's most amazing and explorative funk jams he recorded with Claire Fisher 
and uh, Eric Leeds, who was a member of this uh, extension of the time, like uh, High Fashion and Mutiny, and the original version of uh, Nothing Compares to You, sung by uh, Prince's girlfriend, uh, Susanna Melvoin, sister of his guitarist, Wendy. There's the band. St. Paul, Jerome, Levi Caesar, Eric Leeds. You open up the album. There's St. Paul again. Lyric Guide. Oh yeah, and this is the gatefold. I forget to mention that. It's like a great snapshot of an outdoor picnic scene inside. I'm not going to get too close to it because of the shortage of time. Bernard Wright, Mr. Wright. As far as I know, this is the only one of Bernard Wright's albums that has not been on CD as of yet. But as you can see on the top, it features his biggest hit, which he actually made a music video to, Who Do You Love? This is his last secular album before doing uh, modern gospel records. Lenny White and Marcus Miller produced this. Two Jamaica Queens boys. Great album. The Daz Band's Hot Spot. They're, uh... Last on Motown, I believe, from 1985. I love SCLP, Style, Class, Looks, and Personality. This album, I had to grow on me a little bit. You know, I didn't always like it at first. Thought it was a little too electronic for the funk I was listening to at the time, but it's very in keeping with the electro funk and synth pop of the day, but that's what I have right now. There's going to be another video coming up. It may feature more from the vault than new stuff, but everybody out there, um, take the words of uh, Tony Maiden from the Rufus song from 1979, uh, Rock the Rockaway to Heart. Everybody's got their own way of moving. It doesn't matter as long as you're grooving. See you next time.